Good afternoon, guys. Jordan here with the Nutty Gnome Homestead. Today is April 2nd, 2023, and we are in the front of our farm getting ready to trim up and prune up a bunch of our roses. Now, we've had several frosts here in the last couple of days, and many of our roses had already started to leaf out. So we've got some dieback on some of these, as well as some winter kill on some of the roses as well. I'm a little behind this year. I have not had a chance to get in here and prune these up, but I figured I'd bring you guys along and show you how we do this. You want to clean out all of these dead and dying twigs and canes off of your roses, or they will start promoting more disease and bacteria and fungus in your plant. We want to get rid of these. We'll actually put them in our uh, compost pile, and they'll be ready to go in a year or so. So we want to make sure that we're using sterile equipment, anything that we're cutting with, whether it be a saw or a pair of hand burners, we want to make sure it's sterile. Whenever I start working on a plant, I'm going to use only that, uh, that set of pruners on that plant and not go to another plant until I get these sterilized again. We just use isopropyl alcohol. You can get it at any Walmart or big box store. And if you get into any spots on your roses where there's some sort of bacteria or a fungus or any kind of disease, you want to be sure to make sure you get past the disease part of the cane and then sterilize your, your shears again before you make another cut. If you go from a healthy cane to a diseased cane back to another healthy cane, you're going to transmit that disease. So you want to make sure that you use sterilized pruners every time you make a cut on a sickly looking cane. So let me turn you guys around here and I'll show you what we're dealing with. So we, here we have a pink rose. And as you guys can see, there's a lot of brown winter kill off in here. This is normal. This happens every year. You trim it all back. We usually trim ours back at least 60, sometimes 70 percent. These things grow like weeds, and we want to make sure that we get all these trimmed back proper that way so they can push out and be pretty for the coming season. On this side, we have a carpet rose. And as you can see, it doesn't have near as much winter kill off in it, but there is some. And we're going to get in here and we're going to take some of this out. So this is that pink rose that I just showed you guys. And as you can see, some of these canes died all the way back down to the crown. This right here is the crown. You do not want to cut into that. You want to keep all your cuts up above that. These shears have already been sanitized, so I'm going to go through here and cut that off. These are going to go into a pile and I'm not going to leave these here in the in the flower bed because I do not want them potentially harboring any pest or disease. This cane here, you guys can see it's there's some live up here but I'm not too worried about it. I'll go ahead and trim this one off as well. Get my pruners in there. This cane, same thing. It looks like there's a little bit of live in here. There's some live up above it. We're going to go ahead and prune that off. This may seem a little drastic, but this will improve the overall health of this plant. This cane here is dead. Take it off. And as you guys can see, we've got all these little shoots down here on the bottom getting ready to come up and take their place. So I'm not too concerned about taking too much off of this, this rose. This is out here towards the end of one of the branches. And as you guys can see, we've got some brown here from the frost. We're going to go, and there's no brown for the rest of that stem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this right here. These uh, little twigs here on the end. I'm going to go back to the healthy bud prune those off and all these twigs are going to get picked up so I'm not too too worried about it but I'm going to get to pruning on this and I'm going to show you what it looks like here in just a few minutes okay so it took me about five minutes that's a big difference cutting out all that dead stuff. I've got one big cane right there in the middle 
that's too big for my pruner so I'll have to go get my saw and do that and if you guys see I got this cane over here that uh, has some frost damage on it from this week I'm going to try and see if I can't revive it it's just a little experiment normally I cut all that off so we cut out probably 70% of that tree or that uh, bush so it looks pretty good now I'm going to move on over here to this other one So this is a carpet rose. It doesn't get too terribly tall if you keep it maintained. And towards the end of season, they tend to shoot straight up. But typically, these canes will lay over flat and sprawl out across the, across the ground. That's why they call it a carpet rose. They get big clusters of bright flowers on the ends, and they're absolutely gorgeous, and the bees love it. But as you guys can see, we got a little bit of frost kill, winter kill, whatever you want to call it, some of these here. We're going to get in here and we're going to cut all this out and we're going to make it healthier. So I'm going to get to work on this guy and I'll bring you guys back in just a few minutes. Now first things first, this is hanging out over top of my uh, edging that I have here, these bricks. So we're going to get these trimmed back because I don't want to hit them with our lawnmower. And these carpet roses do have some major thorns on them, so you have to be careful. But we're just going to go through here, trim these up, just until they look good. And whenever we make a cut, I try to go back to, the, to a bud that's facing up. I don't want any buds facing down, and I don't want any buds facing out, like they're going to grow out over top of our, our trim here, our trim edge bricks. So we go back till we have a bud that faces up and we make a clip. I can do that up here. As you guys can see, this one goes right straight up. I get up here, trim, trim that off, and it's good to go. Now, I'm looking at several healthy pieces of stock here that I could take some cuttings off of and try to propagate some of these. These are really pretty. I've got all kinds of people stopping, asking me to take pictures or take a cutting. So I might try to propagate a few of these. I gave some to uh, several family members in the last couple of years. They're absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to trim all these back. And just take your time. You can't cut off too much of these. So long as you don't cut into the crown of the of the rose bush, it's going to be very hard to take too much off of one of these, these roses, especially since they've been established a couple of years like this one. But cutting off this winter kill and trimming these back alone is going to make a huge difference in how these look. They will green up real nice and put on hundreds if not thousands of little beautiful red flowers. You guys see there. That whole piece is killed by the frost during the other day. several good pieces that I'm going to keep for a couple cuttings. Whenever I take a, a rose cutting to propagate the rose, I try to only take the best of the best. There is no point trying to propagate something that isn't perfect. Especially when you have this many options to choose from. For instance, this cane here, about the diameter of a pencil, it's about a foot long. I'll be able to get two cuttings off of this for a propagation. There's nothing wrong with this cane. The only reason I cut this piece off was because it was hanging over my edge bricks and I don't want to hit it with a lawnmower. But that right there is going to give me two cuttings for a potential new plant. So I'm going to get to work on trimming up the rest of this rose, and I'll bring you guys back here in just a few minutes. 
So we just finished trimming up this carpet rose and I took quite a bit off. I went on ahead and stopped because I'm running out of light and I've got some more chores to do. I might come back to this later. But I took a couple healthy pieces that I'm going to take some cuttings off of as well. Let me turn you guys around and I'll show you what this rose looks like. That looks a lot better. We took about 30% off already. I got a lot more to, to take off. I just haven't got around to it yet, like I said. It's getting late and I got some more chores to do. So. Alright guys, well, this is how we trim up our roses after a frost. Get rid of the, the frost killed part. Get rid of anything that may have died over winter or any part that died back. Just be sure that you don't cut into the crown of the rose. That's the big, tough part that sticks up right out of the ground that all the shoots come out of. If you cut into that, there's a very good chance you could end up killing it. So, this is how we print up our roses, get them ready for the spring and the summer, whenever they'll bloom. We will come through here and I'll fertilize each one of these with about 25 pounds per plant of rabbit manure. And I'll break that up into two, uh, two different days of fertilizing. Once about right now and another time about midsummer. Uh, that really helps these roses pop. They'll put on hundreds if not thousands of blooms. So I think they look good. I'm ready for them to start blooming. I appreciate you guys coming along for this. If you guys like this kind of content, I'd appreciate it if you'd like, share, and subscribe. Uh, until next time, get out there and prune your roses and you'll be safe.